Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart. You will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. So my question this morning for us is, what are we carrying and why? Now, as some of you will know, um, I've been walking in Scotland and uh, I take my trusty backpack when I'm walking in Scotland. Um, and a backpack is quite a good illustration, really, because, oh my goodness, if you try and drag stuff, it doesn't usually go very well and you can't climb up the hill or down it and you get a hole in the bottom of your bag and you'd hurt your back. Um, this backpack is great. Keeps the weight off my back. Lets the air blow through. But what Jesus was addressing was that actually the synagogue leaders, the Pharisees, Sadducees of the day, they were filling people's backpacks, basically. People were saying, okay, we want to follow God. And they're going, aha, great. Really glad you like to follow God. Um, if you're going to walk God's way, better put a backpack on. And people are thinking, okay, maybe I can put a backpack on. Yeah, I might be able to do that. Okay, so that's all I've got to do to follow God is just have my backpack on. That's fine, that feels all right. Yeah, cope with that. But then they said, actually, it's not quite all you've got to do. Because actually, you've got to put stuff in your backpack. You can't be a proper follower of God unless you've got stuff in your backpack. So I said, all right, I can put a little bit in my backpack. Let's see how we go. So I can open it up. Hmm. So what have we got? Well, you better take a hammock. You never know when you might need a rest. Take a hammock. All right, I'll take my hammock. Let's see if it'll just pop in there. Oh, someone's put some hot chocolate in there already. Jolly good. Might need that too. Okay, um, so I've got my hammock and I've got my bag. So am I good to go? No? Oh, I've got to do something else? Oh my goodness. Okay, so I might get peckish and need some peanuts. Put the peanuts in. Great for when you're walking. Ah, pillow, cushion? Oh, for when I'm in my hammock, obviously. Of course I've got to take a cushion. Right, where are we going to do that? See if we've got room in here. Hmm. Push it down. I've got first aid kit. Better take that. Always handy to have a first aid kit. In fact, you probably ought to have it to hand, so we better put it in the front. Okay. Um... Oh my goodness, a tent. Just thinking like this might be a bit of a long-term walk that I'm going on with God, if I need a tent as well. My goodness, okay, so that's filled up like half the rucksack now. Um, what's that? Ultralight sleeping pad. Okay, yeah, well I suppose I'll sleep better in my tent if I'm uh, on a mat, there we go. Um, Oh, saucepan and a kettle. Very good. Oh, folds down nicely. Stick that in. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to have to undo some of these straps. There we go. Um, mm. Raincoat. Yeah, that can go in. So my bag... Oh, well, it's got a little bit of room. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in here, though. Woolly hat. I better wear that. It's not going to take up room if I wear it, is it? Um, jumper, wow, thought there was a sleeping bag, but there you go, I'll just have to go cold, walking poles, oh, 
British wildlife, just in case I see something, I don't know what it is. That would be good. Mallet for putting me tent up, always handy. Thermos for me hot chocolate, fantastic. Okay, so that's looking pretty full now. Let's see if we can get these straps done up. Oh. Right. Okay, that's pretty good. Oh, emergency blanket, that I better go in with the hammock, I guess. Very good. There's a few more bits in there, but we'll just try this for now. Let's see. Uh, oh my goodness. Okay. There's obviously a knack to this. Oh. Right. Oh. Okay. I'm going to have to carry the roll mat and my sticks. Oh yeah, skewers in case I want to taste marshmallows. Um, oh, and a cup. Everyone needs a cup. Okay, so I'm ready now for my journey. But you know what? I really don't feel like walking very far anymore. It's just like, it looks like it might be raining outside as well. Really, do I need all this stuff? And Jesus was saying to the people that were listening to him, you have got a heck of a lot of stuff on your back, guys, and you don't need it. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. This one definitely isn't feeling light, even with a good support system on the back. And uh, there's a better way. And Jesus spent his life going round talking to people, tipping the status quo on its head, saying there is a better way. You don't have to be weighed down by all this stuff. Which is a good job, because I could do with taking it off now. And I know from personal experience, because that isn't even nearly half my camping gear, um, that I can walk quite well with nine, maybe 10 kilos on my back. I can do 14 mile, no problem. If you put 18 to 20 kilos on there, I ain't so happy. And I don't enjoy the walk. And my feet hurt. And then I get blisters. And it's not much fun. So keeping things light is definitely a good idea. So Jesus offers another way. He lives in a way that brings life to others. He doesn't rule people out of God's kingdom. He welcomes them in. Whoever they are, whatever they've done with their lives so far. There's the woman who was caught in adultery, bless her. How embarrassing is that? Well, they bring her out in front of the crowds to stone her. Well, where's the guy? If she was caught, there must have been a guy. But no, they're just stoning the woman. Jesus says, what are you playing at? There's Saul, who was going around killing Christians. He thought he was doing God a favour until he meets Jesus. And suddenly he can see there's a better way. Jesus is quite happy talking to lepers, talking to people who have been ousted from society. He's happy giving women and children the time of day. He'll even let the kids sit on his knee. It's not what was done in that day. It's not what was expected, certainly, of a teacher. And yet he does it. He makes God's love freely available to everyone he meets. He doesn't expect life-changing results first. But he knows that it's only God's love, God's acceptance, and God's forgiveness that sets people free. 
his yoke is easy because all he asks is that we open ourselves to God and love him. In loving God, we become more loving of both ourselves and other people. He says in Matthew chapter 7, In everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. This sums up the law and the prophets. And later on, in the same book of Matthew, he says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So basically, Jesus is taking three quarters of our Bible and saying, love God, love your neighbour. Everything else will fall into place. The Jews that he was talking to they didn't have it all written down like we do. They couldn't carry it around with them. And do you know what? There were so many extra laws, so many extra things that had been put in the backpack that if you want to do it properly, you better do it this way. And Jesus is saying, it doesn't matter. If you love God and love each other, everything else will fall into place. And it's a challenge for us because sometimes having all the extra things in your backpack, doing those things, coming to church, going to the prayer meeting, all the good things, I'm not saying they're not good, but sometimes it's too much. And sometimes it restricts our relationship with God because we're too blooming laid down, bogged down with it all. We can't move. We can't hear what God's saying to us because our backpack's up here over our ears. We've got a hat on and we, we're just wandering aimlessly, which is not a good thing to do when you're carrying a lot of weight. So the challenge is to look at ourselves and see what we've got in our backpack. What have we added to God's story? What have we added to what Jesus is telling us to do? What rules and expectations do we as individuals and here at Earl's Colm Baptist Church put on people, ourselves and other people? Do we restrict access to God? Jesus went to the synagogue, but on the whole, he was found outside of it, walking, talking, spending time with people, eating with people, going to weddings. And everywhere he went, he asked people to reconsider their relationship with God. He asked people to believe that God loved them just as they were. He doesn't ask them to come to the synagogue to find out more. He's modelling a new way of accessing God and being transformed by him. Day after day, people from all walks of life follow him, quite literally. He has to climb mountains and get up super early to avoid them because he needs some peace and quiet. They're following him because they want to know. They follow him up the hills. They follow him through the towns. They follow in their tens and in their hundreds. And they don't just follow for a bit. They follow all day. So they're starving. So he's got to provide something to eat because they've had all their pit lunch, pat lunch. But they follow him because... The way that he is showing, it builds people up rather than tearing them down. He brings God into the everyday. There's no holy place and unholy place. Everywhere is holy because God is everywhere. Jesus lets God out of the box. He's no longer someone to be feared or kept hidden. Jesus rewilds God. In the very first few verses of our Bible, we read, The earth was formless and empty. Darkness covered the deep waters. The Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Not only was God the catalyst for creation, the instigator of this world that we call home, God was wild and free and all creation was at his fingertips. 
So often today, God is kept hidden. Access to him for the select few and only at certain times of the week. Jesus shows us there's a better way. So Jesus lets God out of the box. And the challenge for us is will we let him hover over our lives and bring transformation? Are we willing to give him control of our lives, of our church? Are we willing to let him teach us? Are we willing to take his light burden and pass that on to others without adding expectations and rules to it, simply trusting that God is enough? Many times Jesus says to the people following him, you have heard it said, you've been told, these are the rules. But I say, do it this way. There's a better way. We pray. God, thank you that we don't have to be good enough. We don't have to carry all the extra stuff that people might want to try and put on us in order to please you. We just have to love you, love each other, and love the people that we come into contact with. Would you help us to let go of control and let you be in control. Thank you that you don't give up on us. You don't just write us off because we're taking a long time to learn things or because we're not listening or because we've got so much in our backpack that we can't hear what you're saying anyway. Thank you that you walk with us, whether we're carrying a full backpack or a light one. So thank you that you want to show us all a new way of connecting with you, of receiving your love. Amen. Amen.